it doesn't really help the kids in a way. So, um, and he's going to explain Scared why. Scared Straight is easily one of the most controversial shows Patrick in CC. history. Parents of troubled youth pay for their children to tour the inside of a prison or county jail so they can be exposed to the dark reality of life behind bars. Now, they need to do this for, like, predators, bro. Like, really, real talk. They need to put this for predators. This one work on Gen Z kids. Yeah. Most of them. A good, a good majority are not going for When they years. arrive, they meet with real inmates who strike fear into them with threats, with the goal being to prevent today's teenagers from becoming tomorrow's prisoners. But their exposure therapy techniques are definitely questionable. Why the f*** you, dog? Chill out. You are starting in the wrong way. This Kool-Aid, we put this on just like you. Lick your lips. Now stick your hand in that Kool-Aid. Just stick it in there. Now take your finger and just do this to the bottom one. Come here. Bro, what? I kiss you, you orange flavor mother What the fuck? I forgot about this. That's the you you, bitch. Yo, oh, Lord. Man, you a hog. You want to be hog? Let me go. You want to do it? Try me. Try me. Yeah, try me. I want you to try me. I want you to try me. Try me. Like these niggas that got me on the wall, bro. Ain't no fucking way. <laughs> what are you supposed to do right there, bro? Now there's what? no doubt that the show is entertaining and has given us some pretty yeah, hilarious yeah, moments like, what am I over the years. To do? However, our entertainment is at the expense of children's suffering. And the craziest part is, it has been proven on multiple occasions that scared straight doesn't work. In fact, it might actually increase their chances of becoming lifelong criminals. Mm. A lot of people don't realize that Scared Straight is not just a television show on A&E. Yeah, it's a yeah, program that has been implemented yeah. all over the United States why. for the past 50 <laughs> that is years. Pretty crazy. And the reason it got so popular was based on just one alleged successful experiment. Scared Straight was the name of a television documentary released in 1978, produced by Arnold Shapiro. It was critically acclaimed, won an Academy Award, and even won an Emmy. See, they're gonna put really? a stick on your lips, earrings in your ear. And I do swishing your ass up and down these tears, hustling cigarettes for your man. What did I say? What did I say, mother? You're here for two hours. You belong to us for two hours. The film documented youth offenders who visited Rahway State Prison in New Jersey. They met with inmates with the goal of being so scared of going to prison that they went on to live a straight or crime-free life. The documentary claimed that 80 to 90 percent of the 8,000 children who visited Rahway's program would go on to remain law-abiding citizens afterwards. The popularity and surprisingly positive results led to more than 30 states rapidly implementing the program. No oh, wow. further questions were asked. Jails and prisons all over the country saw one doc documentary and thought they had a solution to brothers calling me again uh, oh Kick my mic off. Oh, brother. Oof. No one is so barbaric. It was a drug warrior program. That makes sense, though. That does make sense. Back then, it was way more harsher. This man came back downstairs. Look at this Why? You go, sister? It's a chili poop. Why are you doing that? Hmm? Go, 
Yeah, I'm just, um, I'm just gonna turn that down. Rolling. Yeah, you can turn it up there for now. Are you sure? You can go in my room. Because I need to finish this. I don't want to get distracted. By you. No, like, go upstairs. But I, I can't have sound behind me. So I can't have too much sound behind me. No, I'm saying, I'm talking about you. You just go up there for like three more minutes. Ten more minutes. Is it okay? Like, I think it's like an hour and twenty minutes. Uh huh. Thank, Thank you. you. Can you go upstairs, please? No, no, no. no. Why? That's nasty. Can you go upstairs, please? Well, Can I finish turn this? Into earth. Yeah, let me finish this quick. Hold on. Turn into earth. Yeah. Can I finish this, please? Yeah, when I'm done. When I'm done. Just charge it upstairs for now. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. He didn't even close the door. Oh my. I be trying to convince him so nicely, but it's like sometimes I just want to be like, bro, can you just go upstairs? Like, please? ...to all of their youth offender problems. The program's validity was immediately questioned by juvenile delinquency professionals, but that didn't stop it from becoming popular. The original documentary was followed by Scared Straight, Another Story in 1980, also produced by Arnold Shapiro. This one was just a dramatic film. The subjects were actors who did scripted reenactments of their petty crimes, which led them to entering the Scared Straight program, being screamed at, and then feeling reformed after a couple overnights in the prison. Then in 1987, Scared Straight, 10 years later, aired. I'll Is be that your host for Scared Straight, 10 years later. A fascinating update I on what's happened to the kids Gobert and the convicts Whoopi. filmed a decade ago. What I steal, I need and I want. That's embarrassing. <laughs> 10 years ago, um, yeah, I did that. I did that to look good. Now the difference is I want to look good, but I like to pay for what I take. We got to see the original 1978 crew, and they all explained how much the program changed their life nah. for the better. The second half of the <laughs> nah, documentary. Ken feeling himself. Look at Ken. Crew, and they all explained how nah, much the program himself. changed their life for the he better. The second walking, half bro. of the documentary introduced a new group of troubled teenagers. After their trip to Rahway State Prison, the documentary claimed that all 17 of the youth offenders were crime-free just three months after their visit. Then MTV connected with Shapiro for another sequel. Scared Straight 99. This documentary was potentially the most raw and shocking of them all. The prisoners were threatening these kids to levels we had never seen before. One inmate made a kid hold his pocket as he walked around the cell. This was highly regarded as one of the best out of the series, and people still genuinely believe this was an effective form of therapy for youth offenders. Which makes sense when you consider the societal standard during this time period. Mental health issues that are widely That's known today had not been vigorously studied. Mental health as a whole wasn't taken as seriously as it is now. Plus, it was a lot more common for parents to use tough love and physical punishment to discipline their children. These programs were seen as an extremely cheap and convenient solution to a very complex problem that is juvenile delinquency. But where mm -hmm. Scared Straight received renowned media attention was when they released their 20 years later special. They claimed that of the 17 original 1978 children, only one of them became a career criminal. The 95% success rate shocked news publications. Scared Straight was a miracle solution. They used 17 people's stories for 20 years to justify this entire program around the United States. 
but the popular A&E series you all Dragon know and it. love didn't come until 2011 and was produced by the same man, Arnold Shapiro. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Underdog. Get your money, bro. Your pick money. Patrick C is available in May. Again, download the Underdog. See. So by the time most of us became aware of Scared Straight, it had already been a well-seasoned program all over the United States for 30 plus years. Beyond Scared Straight was a TV show that documented the experiences of troubled children as they embarked on a forced tour of a maximum security prison or jail. Yeah. During the tours, inmates and officers would go to the greatest lengths, screaming, locking them in cells. <laughs> yeah, you can't them expect me to just stand there and let it happen, bro. Like, I know I'm not going to get in this situation, but it's like, bro, you just gonna, you're not just going to grab me by my shirt and let me hang. That's insane. Them, roughing them up. Anything they could do to shock the children and make them terrified of going to prison in hopes that it would steer them clear of a life of crime. I think I've seen this one before. I forgot. I forgot how it went, though. But that dude was crying, bro. This is definitely a Dr. Phil answer for criminals. Yeah, for sure. What's up? You like to fight, homie? That's what you like to do. A little crazy in the dark. I feel though. You a bitch, homie. You a pop tart. I see right through you, homie. You a pop tart. You been that stuff. You been. That ain't no push up, but damn. You a hoe? You want to You want to do? Try me. You smirk at me. He says he don't know. You can't speak up, can you? Are you smirking at me? Oh, now he's scared. You hold this. You drop it, I smack out of you. I don't give a. Oh, oh, shit. This was the most staggering and horrific scared straight program we had ever seen, and people loved it. The show's premiere alone attracted a staggering 3.7 million viewers, making it the most watched original series debut in the network's history. The undeniable success of Beyond Scared Straight led them to producing 83 episodes across nine seasons, 83? spanning from 2011 until 2015. God, it was but the terrorist, most eye-opening realization about this show is that the Scared Straight program was proven by the federal government not to work. Since the release of the original film, Many justice institutions and criminal prevention professionals have thoroughly studied the effects of the program to determine if it actually works. Surprisingly, numerous studies have shown that the scared straight method can actually do more harm than good. The most significant study was conducted by the U.S. Department of Justice after the release of the original film. They examined the outcomes of nine controlled trials conducted from 1967 to 1992. This involved over 900 children with the average age of 15 to 17 who participated in scared straight like programs in eight different states. Also, each study was conducted by a different research team. Every one of these studies also had a control group that did not attend a Scared Straight program. So they were comparing youth offenders who went to Scared Straight versus youth offenders who didn't attend one and measured their likeliness to become a re-offender. The study found no evidence to support the effectiveness of Scared Straight and similar programs. In fact, all analysis showed that involvement in these programs increased measures of crime and delinquency. In nearly every one of the Jeez. nine studies, the group who went to Scared Straight had a higher rate of re-offense than the group who didn't go. After after this comprehensive study was what? published, many others were conducted with different test subjects, different age groups, and different crimes. Many of the studies would produce very similar results. In 1997, University of Maryland researchers completed a report for Congress on the evidence for various crime prevention strategies. The researchers had no problem listing Scared Straight as one of the programs that doesn't work. To make things worse, these programs could potentially violate federal law. In 2002, which was nine years before the first A&E episode aired, the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention in Washington informed all states that scared straight programs or similar programs may violate the separation requirement of the JJDP Act. According to the act, it is mandatory that juvenile offenders and non-offenders should not be detained or confined in any institution where they may have sight or sound contact with adult offenders. In short, it's illegal to have kids in jail with adults, which makes this clip even harder to watch. A terrified nine-year-old boy dangled like a raw piece of meat in front of a pack of prisoners. A raw piece of meat though? His crime stealing pocket change from his mom and lying. I think we can all agree that traumatizing a child to this degree for stealing pocket change that, is that insane. Be funny, but then the way filming it, it, editing it, and putting it out into the world is next level. One time they even showed these but children a body and described to them what their parents would experience if they Wait, go whoa. to jail and die while on the Yo, did I show them a dead body, side. Though? These programs typically break these children down. They start crying, are mortified, and just want to go home. The sad part is their home life is probably rough as well. 
On the surface, the concept behind these scared straight programs makes sense. Troubled kids are so afraid of prison that they change their ways to avoid such a dark future. However, there are multiple examples that say otherwise. Toby Keith Johnson was first featured on the show on season three, episode 13. He was quiet and didn't show any emotion. The guards tried to break him down and make him feel bad about his choices, but he didn't budge. At the end, when the parents reunite with the children, Toby's mother didn't show up. Eight months later, Toby yeah. was featured on the show again. This time, he was an inmate. He was incarcerated for allegations of assaulting his mom. He got out two years later on parole, but sadly, continued a life of crime. Yo. He was arrested multiple times on meth and gun charges, but the most recent one was the worst of them all. In August of 2020, he was arrested for imprisoning a 25-year-old woman and making threats of harm, with Johnson forcefully grabbing the victim by the throat, choking her, and violently throwing her to the ground. The aggression continued with it, even going as far as Toby threatening her with a knife. Law enforcement would report visible signs of bruising on the victim's neck. I think it's pretty obvious that Scared Straight had no positive effect on Toby. whatsoever. Franklin Morris made his premiere wow. on A&E in 2012. At the time of filming, he was living in Baltimore with his mother, Dana. In an emotional episode, Dana revealed the extent of Franklin's school suspensions, stating that she couldn't even begin to give a precise number. Franklin himself shared a nonchalant attitude towards his mother's concern, saying, My mother says I'm even going to end up dead or in jail. I really don't pay no mind. At the young age of 14, Franklin participated in the program, already having convictions for gambling and vandalism. One of the incidents gambling? that landed Crazy. Franklin a spot on the show saw Franklin and his friends wreak havoc in a store, knocking items off the shelves and vandalizing a local shop. Years after his time on the show, Franklin Morris became one of three teenagers who met a grim fate near a playground in North yeah. Baltimore. Alongside a 19-year-old and a 17-year-old, Franklin was found, shot in the head, and pronounced dead at the scene. But I thought about Damn. Was, it really was no big deal. The reset program, it didn't change me. It, it really don't feel no different. Since the majority of the show's participants were children at the time, it's hard to find the long-term results of their lives. However, based on what I found, it seems like a lot of them went on to live regular lives. If you search what happened to so-and-so from Beyond Scared Straight, most of what you find is clickbait leading you to an Instagram page of someone who we can't confirm was actually on the show. Bro, so if the program has that? been proven to be ineffective through various extensive studies across the past 30 years, why did they do a show about it? Well, that's because the guy who has built his entire career from this program, Arnold Shapiro, is fully convinced that this program is a good thing. Shapiro says that all the extensive studies are totally irrelevant because they were done from 1967 to 1999. He also said that only the academic community believes proper counseling for youth offenders works. If society had the money or resources to do that, that would be great if every kid could have years of counseling, but it's not realistic. It would be interesting if A&E used the millions of profits from the show to get these youth offenders counseling, since society doesn't have the money, right? Shapiro shrugs right. off the criticism of Scared Straight. There's every variation. It works for some, it doesn't work for some. But you can say that about any program that exists. Shapiro thinks that as long as it works for some, then it justifies the program. And since the program exists, he is happy profiting off of it. He has openly admitted that the children they decide to be on the show are not the ones that- If for sure feels non-profitable, he- Maybe complaining like crazy. They think will change, but rather Trust. the ones with the best personality. It really is based on their personalities and what happens with them. We didn't have any belief that Brandon T from Michigan, who stood up to the officers and just kind of had a meltdown, would ever change. Even when the tour was over, he got thrown out, but we still picked him because it was so explosive and we never saw anything like that before or since. Although other kids have stood up to officers, it's amazing. When I went through high school or even college, you never thought you would disrespect a teacher or an authority figure, especially somebody in law enforcement, but these kids have no fear. It's crucial to question whether the pursuit of profits overshadows moral principles, as corporate interests often prioritize ratings and financial gain over the well-being of humans. But it makes oh, it even sure. worse when you consider that the people they are affecting are not consenting adults. These are children. And it's being broadcasted to millions of people to watch them suffer. They are being told that this is genuine rehabilitation, and they don't really have a choice to participate. Occasionally, they rebel so much that they get kicked out of the jail, but most of the time, they are trapped with no escape. The truth is, everyone wants a quick and cheap solution to an extremely complicated and layered social problem that is juvenile delinquency. But hey, as long as it works sometimes, it's all good. Right? You go forever, put that in his head. Yep. Sometimes, yeah. You, 
Someone said sometimes you fucked up the whole statement, bro. The whole statement. 